Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. <laughs> and I'm not far from my door today. I just walked down in the woods here and this is where yesterday I found a wood frog and I was lucky enough to be able to capture it and make today's episode all about the wood frog. So this wood frog, which is actually a female and I can tell by how big it is, I kept her overnight in a terrarium with some water, some wet leaves, a place she could climb out, kept her at ambient temperature, shot some pictures, and now I'm going to release her back exactly where I found her. In this episode, I'm going to break down the scientific name, tell you how it got its common name, how to ID it, how to find it, and a lot of great stuff about its natural history. And the last thing I want to talk about is how the wood frog is the northernmost species of all amphibians in North America. This is the only amphibian you can find inside the Arctic Circle. And why is that? Because it has this incredible ability to freeze almost solid and then thaw out and start living again. It's really an incredible thing. So stay tuned and check out this episode on the wood frog. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this basic. It's like top. Dog woods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Oh produce seed pollen and it's so the scientific name of the wood frog is lithobates sylvaticus litho means stone bates means one who walks or haunts and sylvaticus comes from the root silva which has to do with forests and forest cultures so lithobates the stone that walks and silva in the forest, so it's the stone that walks in the forest. And it's hard to find when it's in the forest, and he or she is really well camouflaged. Its common name, the wood frog, is what it implies. It's found in the woods. And unlike frogs like a pickerel frog or a leopard frog or a bullfrog or a green frog that you find living right on the margin of water or in the water, or right on the edge of the water, these frogs come to the water only to breed and spend the rest of their time in the terrestrial environment in the woods. And little is actually known about them because they're really hard to find and their woodland habitats have not been very well studied. How do you identify a wood frog? Well, look at its face. It's got a robber's mask on it. It's got a black line across its eye all the way to its nose on both sides. And this has been described as the robber's mask. Look at his lip and you'll also see that the upper lip has, is white, almost looks like a white line where his lip is. And the third feature you can look for is these two ridges from his eye all the way down his back called lateral dorsal folds. These frogs are relatively small size. Biggest, they'll reach about three inches long or about eight centimeters. Where can you find wood frogs? Well, in this kind of habitat. In Virginia, you can find them in woodlands and they will go pretty far from water during their terrestrial adult phase, but then they'll come to places like this to breed. And this is a little bit atypical for breeding. They usually breed in vernal pools, but this is a stream that dried up. It has little pools that will cut off from the other ones, and it make a great fish-free habitat for the frog to breed. It'll breed only in waters where there are no fish. Fish love to eat frog eggs, so the females are very selective about where they're gonna breed. So you can find wood frogs down through the spine of the Appalachians from Maine all the way down to probably Tennessee, Georgia, maybe even Alabama. But from there, they are occur northernly across the north part of the United States, 
all through Canada, all the way to Alaska, and including Alaska. This is the northernmost occurring species of any amphibian in North America. You can find wood frogs inside the Arctic Circle, so no other amphibian occurs as far north as this wood frog, which to me makes it pretty special. The frog I found is a female. I know it's a female because of how wide she is around the middle. It's hard to tell male from female frogs except during the breeding season. Male frogs in the breeding season have a very enlarged swollen thumb in the front. This frog, this female, does not. And you can see here that her toes are, look all about the same size. But the male has this big swollen thumb that he uses to help grab onto the female. After I found this frog, I read and read and researched everything I could find. Almost every source I found used the word explosive to describe its reproduction. Why explosive? Well, all the wood frogs, males and females, these terrestrial wood frogs, after they thaw out, they migrate to vernal pools in mass all at the same time. And when they get to this vernal pool, males will start calling. Well, the male makes a call that sounds like a quacking duck. I think that's the best way to describe it. And you've heard my female make these sounds. So these are the sounds of the female, but the females don't call males, the males call the females. Even wood frogs can't distinguish a male from a female. So the male will call and then jump on the closest frog that comes to it. And if the frog is very large across the middle, it'll grab it with his thumbs and they'll mate. If it's a skinny female, which probably has bred already and laid her eggs, or a male that doesn't have the big girth, he'll let go. It's a little crazy system. Each female wood frog will lay between 1,000 and 3,000 eggs. And I looked at this female and I thought, well, how could there be 3,000 eggs in there? Because I've seen the masses that these frogs and other amphibians lay, and I always wondered, how do they create these huge egg masses from something that's so small? Well, apparently the eggs inside are very small, but as soon as they come out, as soon as they hit the water, they start to absorb water around it and become very large. Wood frogs will lay eggs in communal masses. So there'll be huge, huge masses of eggs in these vernal pools from the wood frogs. People often ask me when I talk about amphibians or reptiles, what do they eat? Well, the wood frog eats invertebrates like spiders and slugs and insects and pretty much anything it can catch. And like a lot of, of the larger frogs and toads, they'll eat virtually anything they can put in their mouth. So that's probably the bottom line. The really amazing thing about the wood frog, and the thing that fascinates me the most, is its ability to become virtually completely frozen. Unlike other frogs and amphibians and some reptiles that will go to the bottom of a pond to avoid freezing or go deep underground to get under the frost line or bury themselves somewhere, these wood frogs just go maybe an inch below the surface of the leaf litter and start producing their own antifreeze. And what they do is they concentrate glucose in their cells to prevent those cells from freezing individually. Almost the whole frog, two thirds of the frog's body actually becomes frozen. Their heart rate stops, their breathing stops, their blood pressure drops to nothing, and they're essentially 
clinically dead. <laughs> but when they thaw back out again, they come back to life. Really amazing thing, that antifreeze, that glucose, that cryoprotectant prevents ice crystals from forming inside cells. If ice crystals form inside a cell, it'll rupture and burst the cell membrane. Just like in a, a like if you put a piece of lettuce in a, in a freezer, it, once you thaw it out and come out, it's just all, you know, destroyed and limp. So thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the wood frog. Of course, I was excited to find it. This is the first wood frog I think that, that I've seen in many, many years here. And I'm wondering where all his friends are. So I keep coming down here and checking if they're calling or if they're here, because they're usually breeding in explosive groups. And I'd love to find that. So I'll keep you up to date on that. If you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like. I love uh, hearing comments from you. Check me out on Instagram or Facebook, Nature at Your Door under the same name, and leave me some pictures of what you found. So thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I hope I'll see you at the next episode.